Today, J.D. Vance sat down with podcaster Joe Rogan for an interview that was as disastrous as Donald Trump's, and it was so because of a topic that J.D. Vance brought up, which is so incredibly damaging to the campaign and so extreme that even Joe Rogan had to fact check him. Yes, J.D. Vance was caught in a lie in a friendly interview, and Joe Rogan nuked him with a fact check that is so damaging to the Trump campaign that Donald Trump is clearly panicking, and we are going to get into all of that. But before we do, if I could quickly ask you to leave a like on this video, and if you haven't already and you enjoyed this channel, to hit that subscribe button. It goes a long way, and it really means the world to me. Now, like I said, Donald Trump pretty upset with J.D. Vance, and you can tell because of what he said during his speech today. We should have cognitive tests for anybody that runs for president and vice president. Oh, how about that guy she picked for vice president? What a loser. What a loser that one is. I mean, that guy, could you imagine? Well, she picked somebody so bad that there is a certain rule. Make them really bad and they'll never take you out, right? Donald Trump continues to say this line, and I don't know how J.D. feels about it, but I'm sure he can't feel great, especially because there has been so much conversation about Donald Trump's cognitive decline and whether he could even be president if he were elected. So obviously trying to cover his bases there, but J.D. as well trying to cover Donald Trump's bases and the dis dishonest defense that he gave in this interview, specifically of the Puerto Rico joke at Donald Trump's MSG rally. And he said that right here. You, of course, I'm sure paid attention to the kerfuffle over a comedian at the Trump rally at MSG. I think you even know this guy, right? He's a good friend okay, of mine. Okay, yeah. Tony so, Hinchcliffe. So, so he, tells, he tells a joke about, um, you know, Puerto Rico, the number of mentions on CNN about this joke in the last 48 hours, this was as of last night, 143 on MSNBC, 101 on ABC, 53 on NBC, 32 and on CBS, 31 in two days. They talked about that joke effectively nonstop. You know what it means to have 31 mentions on NBC news about this particular thing? That is a crazy, that is saturation. Last night, Joe Biden called the half of America that's going to vote for Donald Trump garbage. Do you think that the word garbage is going to appear on CNN 141 times over the next two days? No. I would bet no. Now, what's the difference? Well, one difference is that it was a comedian telling a joke, and it's the president of the United States telling what he actually thinks. Another difference is, again, it's a comedian with, at best, a tenuous connection to the Trump campaign. And on the other hand, you have the actual sitting president. It's so ridiculous that J.D. Vance spent the days after that joke was told saying that people are overblowing it and they, they are so offended and easily triggered. And then he himself is easily triggered and offended by President Biden not calling out Trump supporters necessarily, which if he did and he called them garbage, I would have been fine with that. It's true. But calling out that disgusting and racist remark for being garbage which it was. And if you're offended by that, J.D. Vance, then you have some deeper problems. Actually, you do have deeper problems. We know that. And the dishonest defense of Trump continued for J.D. Vance, as it always does with lies about the election right here. This is, this is where I always get pissed about the media conversation around what happened in 2020, is what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll sort of find the craziest conspiracy theory about what happened in 2020, They'll debunk it and say, oh, look, this this thing, we, this shows that nothing bad happened in 2020. There's a nonpartisan organization that actually looked at what would have happened to Americans' votes if they had just known the truth about the fact that Joe Biden fundamentally had traded his political influence for money. Like, that's what it was. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old-fashioned American corruption story. I will give you access to powerful people in exchange for money, right? That was the true scandal of the Hunter Biden laptop. Again, it wasn't Hunter Biden doing cocaine with a stripper. That was the fun part. You can say that. <laughs> I have an election to win. Um, so that was the real scandal. It was scandal. the corruption. It was the corruption. And, and this evidence of the corruption. Just, and, and, and direct evidence of the corruption. And the nonpartisan organization said that knowledge, which was suppressed by the entire American media and big tech scene. You would have figured by now that after... Tim Walls just shut down J.D. Vance on the debate stage over his lies about the 2020 election. He would realize that that is not a winning topic for him. And we saw J.D. Vance get into another 
losing topic a little bit later in this interview that Rogan had to fact check him on that. And of course, we are going to get into that. But there was a really strange comment that Vance made right before about the type of voters he thinks that Trump and him are going to win. Let's take a look. And at I, that. I think that, frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if me and Trump won just the normal gay guy vote. Oh, because, sure. again, they just wanted to be left the hell alone. And now you have all this crazy stuff on top. Up of it. So there are two parts of that remark that are really weird to me. The first is normal gay guys as opposed to what, J.D.? I don't know. It's such a strange thing to say. But the argument that Vance is trying to make there is that people see Trump and himself as those protecting individual freedoms, that the Republican Party protects your personal freedoms, which couldn't be further from the truth. You want to assault women's reproductive freedoms. You want to assault the freedom to have medical coverage. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are standing for the opposite of freedom. They don't want people's votes to cast to be cast in a democracy. That is certainly not freedom. And we get into more of that reproductive freedom discussion when Joe Rogan brings up something that is very true that's happening in Texas, and Vance kind of tries to deny it. Chooses you- that men are making decisions for what women can and, can and can't do. I hear that. And one of the more concerning aspects of this is like, say, if you live in a state like Texas, where there's a, a limit to when you can get an abortion, I think it's like six weeks, which a lot of people think at that point in time, you can't even tell whether or not you're pregnant. And this puts a lot of women in like very vulnerable positions. And then there's this thought that they could go to another state where it is legal and have an abortion, but they could be possibly prosecuted for that in their state. That That's concerning to me, that we can make, if, if there's a place in the country where it's legal to have a medical procedure, and you live in a state where it's not legal, that your state can decide mm. what you can and can't do with your body, which is essentially based on a religious idea. And a lot of the, and I'm not criticizing it one way or another, but I'm saying that a lot of what this choose life thing is about that life is precious and life is sacred and life begins at the moment of conception. And some people agree with this, but other people disagree with this. And it seems to be uh, a lot of it is based in religion. My concern is using that to dictate whether or not a person can legally travel to another state. I don't think the government should be monitoring where you travel or what you do when you travel as long as that thing is legal. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned with this idea that you could be prosecuted for it in your state for doing something that's legal somewhere else. I don't like the idea, to be clear. I've I've not heard of this maybe as a as like a possibility, but not as something that actually exists in the in the law. But I've not heard of somebody being arrested, and I don't like the idea of arresting people for moving about the country. I haven't heard of them doing it either. I've heard of, okay. I've heard of the discussion. I've heard as a threat. That, yes. That I... So as much as J.D. Vance wants to lie and escape this issue, it is true that there are counties and local governments in Texas that are making it illegal to use their interstates to drive out of Texas to get an abortion. Making it illegal to cross state lines for a medical procedure that is legal in other places. How is J.D. Vance trying to make the argument that MAGA and the Republican Party is the party of personal freedom when you don't have the freedom not only over your own body, but to travel throughout the United States? It's absolute insanity. And this discussion of the MAGA assault on women's reproductive freedom was continued by Joe Rogan. I was actually kind of surprised to see him continue to press Vance on this issue, considering kind of how much of a softball this interview was, but he called him out for a lie right here. Like the, the concept in the zeitgeist is that abortion had always been, you know, Roe Ro v. Wade had always been the law of the land, and then all of a sudden that was taken away, and you have these religious men who are trying to dictate what women can and can't do with their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, I mean, again, I, I understand that. I understand the, the, the pushback against that. But I, I think you can go, like with so many other issues, you can go way too far about it, and it becomes trying to celebrate something that, it, at the very best, if you grant, I think, every argument of the pro-choice side, it is a neutral thing, not something to be celebrated. I think there's very few people that are celebrating that. What world is J.D. Vance living in where it is the left that is taking this issue too far? We even see Rogan correct Vance and him saying that, oh, it's it's not something that's praised. Yeah, of course, it's not something that's necessarily praised. People just want reproductive freedom, right? Some people disagree with the personal choice to have an abortion, but 
they believe people should have that choice. That's what this is about. Again, returning to this MAGA pretending that they care about freedom, co-opting this word for their movement that is completely antithetical to it. If you really look at it for even a second, who's taking it too far, J.D.? You're taking it too far with your national abortion bans. J.D. Vance has also said he doesn't want women, like we talked about earlier, to be able to travel to states where, na where abortions are accessible because they want a national abortion ban and they want protections, and I guess they're not protections, just assaults on any reproductive rights women could have. Your party is antithetical to the idea of freedom. You're taking it too far. And it's exactly what Kamala Harris called out J.D. Vance and Donald Trump for in this clip right here. Former, former President Donald Trump um, has said that he would be a protector of women, um, whether they like it or not. What do you make of that? And how does that contrast with your views on women and their rights and needs? Well, I'll just speak on behalf of myself, but also the Americans that I speak with every day around our country, regardless of their gender, which is the majority of Americans believe that women are intelligent enough and should have and be respected for their agency to make decisions for themselves about what is in their best interest and not have their government, and certainly not Donald Trump, telling them what to do. And his latest comment is just the most recent in a series of examples that we have seen from him in his words and deeds about he de how he devalues the ability of women to have the, 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 the choice and the freedom to make decisions about their own body. For Just a perfect response from Kamala Harris on an issue that is a loser for Republicans. I don't know why Vance is talking about it. I don't know why Vance is ever talking. Much like Donald Trump, we say he suffers from the same affliction. Every time he opens his mouth, it is bound to backfire. But this is not a winning issue for you. So please do keep talking about it. Please do keep sharing your extremist beliefs. We're going to call them out. So what we're going to do every single day on this show. And if you want to support that, as always, you can hit that subscribe button. You can leave a like on this video. And if you stuck around to the end, you can drop a blue bar in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you soon.